looks like you've stumbled onto my reading vlog for Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring by J.R.R. Tolkien. <sighs> this has been long awaited in my 21 years of life. I've been so excited to read this and now it's just the time. I finally got my hands on this beautiful edition that my friend loaned me because we did a book swap. I own all the other editions all the other books in this edition series, but I couldn't find the first one, so it's been a while, but finally got my hands on it, which is fantastic. I just started reading it, and a lot, every single person has told me that I just need to know going in that the first 100 pages are a little dull. Well, let me just say, I read the prologue, and the prologue is probably what most people would consider really dull and I was interested by the prologue so I think I think we we've got a good thing going here the prologue is mainly just about the history of the hobbits and I actually have seen I think most of the hobbit movies it, I went to go see it with my friends I'm sorry if this upsets you that I watched the hobbit movies before reading the hobbit or reading these books let's just say I didn't have a choice it was, they were wonderful movies and I've been so wanting to read it ever since. I also read the foreword to this edition, which also someone might say is dull because it's literally just talking about all the different edits that these books have gone through and I loved it. But let's just continue on to the vlog. I hope you enjoy, I hope I enjoy, I'm really excited to read these. I have the music from the movie soundtrack playing in the background because I love that soundtrack so much and now I have it playing while I'm reading the scenes, which is just my favorite way of enjoying a book. And then when I finish this, at the end of this vlog, I'm going to watch the movie because I brought the DVDs with me, so I'm really excited. I wish the best for myself in this book. I can't wait. <sighs> Also a heads up that this book, that this vlog is probably going to be long. It's probably going to be over a month of me reading this because I want to take it in slow steps. I don't want to toss myself into it too much unless it fully grips my attention. So now without further ado, let's go on to me reading this. Frodo Bobo and I almost have the same birthday. My birthday's on September 21st. Hello, we're back. So we just finished chapter one, a long expected a long expected party, and I love it. Oh my gosh. I love all the characters that are already being introduced. Like of course I've heard about Frodo and Bilbo and Gandalf and Samwise. I've heard of them. I've seen like their depictions in the movie obviously, but like now I get to read about them and it's really exciting and I think they're all really neat characters. The only thing that's throwing me off ever so slightly is in older books sometimes quotations are done with the single quote instead of the double quote, so that's just taking a little bit getting used to, but that's just life. Oh, I'm loving it. I just started a Twitter thread with all of my reactions and whenever I'm reading, whenever I finish a section, I'm gonna post on it there for the day, but yay. This is everything that I'm gonna read for today, I think, because I want to pace it out a little bit, but we're excited. update on Lord of the Rings. Okay, also my mom is mowing the lawn right now, but I need to talk about this book right now, so this is just what you have to deal with. So I read chapter two yesterday. I didn't give an update because it was really late, but I want to talk about it now. So chapter two was The Shadow of the Past, I think. Shadow of the Past? The Shadow of the Past. And I finally learned about the rings, and I learned what the one ring is very exciting. I also met Sam 
And he's so cute. And I think he's the really squishy one that everyone always talks about. So I'm always starting to see more of Sam. The next chapter is called Three is a Company. And I'm pretty sure there's three of them when they go out and travel about. And I think the third one is also cute and squishy. Maybe. I don't know. So I can't wait to read about the third one. Let's read. Ah! Oh my gosh. So first off. Sam came running out of the house and it says he had been saying farewell to the beer barrel in the cellar. <laughs> Gosh, I love that. So I'm a little confused. I'm not sure if Pippin is coming along. I don't know if they if they said somewhere that Pippin was all of a sudden coming, but Pippin's there. So I think Pippin might be the third person in the gang. And then later over here it says, this is about Sam. He had put on his head a tall, shapeless felt bag, which he called a hat. In the gloom, he looked very much like a dwarf. I love it. Upon the hearth, the fire is red. Beneath the roof, there is a bed. But not yet weary, are our feet still round the corner we may meet. A sudden tree or standing stone that none have seen but we alone. Tree and flower and leaf and grass, let them pass, let them pass. Hill and water under sky, pass them by, pass them by. You can really tell that J.R. Tolkien is a linguist because he's, I mean, we're like 80 pages in and he's already brought up how if you speak to someone in a language that they understand, then it goes to their brain, but if you speak to someone in their own language, it goes to their heart. He's already brought it up. It's already right here when Frodo is talking to the elves in their language. Like, Tolkien is just sliding the linguistics in there. I'm so proud. I just finished chapter three. So that was Three is Company. And it was basically just Pippin and... Frodo and Sam walking through the forest and they ran into the elves, got to meet the elves, got some cute linguistics in there, also fun. <sighs> I'm loving it. They barely even set out on their journey and the elves were like, you should bring some friends. And I'm like, are they all going? Are they going to pick up? Who's the other one? Mary? I think Mary's the other one who's waiting for them. Are they going to pick up Mary too? Because Mary sounds adorable. update so i just got past chapter six which was the old forest so at first it was a little boring and there was a lot of description of the forest which i've been warned of so that took a little bit longer but then it started to get exciting because then the, 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 the wood stuff happened and and then the person started singing and coming out of the woods and it was something. Yeah, quite a chapter. I'm I'm hoping there's a little less woodsy description, but it's an adventure story through the woods, so it, it's obviously going to have that wandering through the woods kind of arc, so I'm trying to keep my expectations a little lower for the next couple chapters, because I have a feeling it's going to be a lot of wood stuff, but still, it's still happening. page 150 something never mind i'm at page 193 excuse me what have they updated my goodreads about this does the world know <laughs> well we better find out let's see mm -mm 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 -mm. let's just call it page 200 it's fine no one has to know oh i guess i did update goodreads i guess that's why i'm i 49% through this book, which is so exciting. So I'm definitely past the part where everyone says it's like the boring section until you have to like really get into it. And I enjoyed almost all of that, except for the weird Tom Bombadil parts. Those were just straight up weird and didn't make sense. So that was weird. 
But now I'm on chapter 12, Flight to the Ford. And it's going well. Let's see how many pages this chapter is. I've been trying to do, to read at least a chapter every time I'm like sitting down to read. Oh, this is exciting. Okay, this is only about 16 pages long. And then after that, I get to book two within book one. Which is very interesting. Huh. Sweet. So I guess something really happens at the during this chapter, which is fun. Alright, I will read and get back to you. So I just tried to make an iced matcha green tea latte. It looks fine, right? Okay, let's try. So I wouldn't call it disgusting, but I wouldn't call it good. Like I followed the instructions, I added more vanilla, and it still tastes like dirt. <sighs> what did I do wrong? Time to cut some hair. too perfect until I shower later so for now she's good so I finally made it through the huge chapter that was like 30 something pages long where they just talked about it was the cancel of Elrond and it was just so long there's so many details it was intense but I got through it and I understood most of it so that is a win, and now I have no idea what will happen next. <laughs> second book because I, I think the second book is two powers so I don't know what where they're gonna end this one on because it, I feel like they're just starting a new journey now so are they gonna make it to their destination are they gonna stop somewhere I don't know so I'm assuming most people who are watching this video have read Fellowship of the Ring and either really enjoyed it or really want to know my opinions on it and I really want to know from y'all what are your thoughts on Gandalf? Because I know he's supposed to be like the all-wise, all-knowing man, but sometimes he's really a wise ass, which like I get. He is wise and he's probably right in all the things he says, but sometimes he's just like, well, if you listen to me, we wouldn't be in a pickle. 
which he's not wrong. It's just the way he says it. You're like, bro, we understand you are the wise one in this situation. But still, have a little class, my friend. And now they're all unloading the pony. And then they look around and they're like, it appears Gandalf has done nothing. And I'm like, raw, carry your weight. So just let me know what your thoughts are on Gandalf, because I don't know how I feel about him right now. Okay, look, as a linguistic student, I understand 100% that this is not melon, but sometimes you just gotta laugh. And imagining that, oh boy, imagining that Gandalf just suddenly thinks, oh, of course, melon, and throws his staff is just wonderful. Hello, so I'm almost done with reading The Fellowship of the Ring. I'm really excited about it. I'm taking a couple days break because this week is so stressful with school and work. Oh my gosh, my brain is melting. Um, so I definitely can't read this week, but I think I'll finish it probably on the weekend. And here's the thing. <laughs> So I'm not going to watch the movie until I finish the book because I want to watch the movie anyways with my friend. But I'm going to go watch The Hobbit now, part one, because I've already seen The Hobbit. I saw it when it came out. It was the first like Lord of the Rings movie thing that I ever saw. I didn't know any context. I didn't know what anything was or was happening, but I went to go see it and I loved it. And I got it on iTunes couple weeks ago because it was discounted it was only like five dollars so i was like heck yes and now i really am in the mood to watch a lord of the rings movie but i can't watch the fellowship of the ring yet so now i'm gonna go watch the hobbit i'm probably not gonna watch the whole thing but i just want to get that vibe you know i want to get that i want to get the goods so now i'm gonna do that <laughs> on so i'm watching the hobbit and they're talking about smaug and i'm like all right cool um and they say he's a fire drake from the north drakes don't have wings how is he flying hmm? <gasps> oh my god Oh my god, isn't that Frodo? Isn't that Elijah? Hello? Hello? Oh my god! This is looking great. Oh my god! Hi, it's the next day. So I finished watching all of the first Hobbit movie yesterday, and I know that this is a controversial opinion, but I really enjoyed it. First off, because the first time I watched The Hobbit, I went to see it with my friends, and I didn't understand what was happening at all, and I'm like, I thought it was good, like I enjoyed it back then, but I didn't know anything at all. <laughs> so now when I watched it, I was like, oh my gosh, this makes sense, because in The Fellowship of the Ring, this thing happens, and I'm like, oh my gosh, look, it's that one thing. And while I haven't read The Hobbit yet, I plan to. So I'm excited. Yeah. Also, there was one weird thing which I contested with Jade, who has read The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings and knows all the stuff. But within the first five minutes of the first Hobbit movie, Bilbo says, oh yes the fire drake smaug came from the west or the north or something like that and i was like excuse me smaug is a fire drake hang on um double check just to make sure that i wasn't losing it and yes indeed drakes don't have wings and smaug has wings so why in all of the hell did smaug have wings and was called a fire drake when really He's a dragon. I'm pretty sure he's a dragon, not a whipper. And I need to check. I haven't I haven't really seen him on screen, so I need to make sure. But I think he's a dragon, so why did they call him a drake? I just... <sighs> anyway, 
So now I'm going to watch the second part of The Hobbit, Desolation of Smog. I think that's it. Yeah, because the last one is Battle of the Five Armies. I'm interested why the second one is called Desolation of Smog when there's still a whole third movie. Like, what do they do in the third movie if they've already desolated Smog? Or are they being desolated by Smog? You know, we'll see. We'll see. To the you shall not pass part but i think they changed it for the movie and for all the means to be you shall not pass instead of you cannot pass to make it a little more dramatic but i think i've reached that part which is very exciting i've been waiting to see where it is i got there so now i am about 50 ish pages from the end which is exciting the last 50 pages i feel like are just really slamming hard. It's good stuff. I really wanted to film my 1k Q&A or like my May favorites video today, but I'm really not feeling it because in case you didn't know, the world is a terrible and dark place right now and yeah, there are a lot of people out there who are working really hard to make sure that there is equality and to bring down the systems of oppression, which they're doing such amazing and hard work. I'm just here. Yeah, if you can donate anything at all to help out in regards to the riots that are happening right now and the police brutality that's going, around, going on right now, please do that's really important uh, otherwise if you can't afford to donate um, anything then you know educate yourself and find out other ways that you can help out because we all need to do something because this is just it's just so unjust and it's just unbelievable that, that these things are still going on and we have to do whatever we can. So that's my little piece of it. Now I'm going to keep reading this and see what happens with my day. Every time these hurricane drill warning sounds come on, I seriously think the world is ending. And now every single time I'm quite sure that it actually might be true. It's a little while later um and i did finish reading the fellowship of the ring and i watched the movie with my friend deja but i forgot to film any of it because we were having such a good time and then i flew back to washington so i'm back here and i wanted to close out this vlog so first off i rated the fellowship of the ring four stars i really enjoyed it i did go into it kind of ex expecting it to be a little more questionable if that makes sense so it did come out i think in the 60s maybe maybe earlier hang on we're checking 
So this was originally published in the 50s and it was written by J.R.R. Tolkien, who has been criticized in the past for having some racist perceptions in his literature. So I went in trying to be really cognizant of that. I didn't find a lot of places where I felt like there were, there was like perpetuations of racism in there. Maybe the black writers or the orcs. I have heard a lot of conversation about the orcs being kind of a manifestation of J.R. Tolkien's racism. I haven't been able to find a review that goes into depth about it. So if you know anyone who has spoken about it in a video or you have any resources that really looks into it, because so far I've only found a couple blog posts and some videos that kind of mention it but don't really go into depth on it so let me know if you find any of that um, but most of those concerns um, I felt like didn't really come over with the movie so the movie I thought was pretty well done I mean besides for you know the whole Lord of the Rings being pretty European white I thought it was a really well done adaptation and I thought it was really neat this isn't the um, the extended edition. I heard the extended edition has like 20 extra minutes. I think actually the movie ends, yeah, the movie ends right about where the book ends. Or I think, pre I'm pretty sure it's different for the next book. But I thought this was a pretty spot on adaptation. They took out the whole scene with, um, with Tom Bombadil. Thank goodness, because that was the only part that I was like, why? What is happening? It was so weird. And the whole Council of Elrond thing made a lot more sense. They brought in a lot of the information that was like an info dump in that chapter and actually kind of wove it into the beginning, which was really good because I was like, oh, okay, that makes so much more sense. And like a lot of things made a lot more sense when I was watching the movie because it wasn't, it was kind of woven in throughout and not just in one section. So that was really neat. I watched it with my friend Tasia. We had a really good time. Oh my gosh, I'm really excited to start the next one. This was me reading the first Lord of the Rings book. It was quite a journey. I've been waiting to do this for quite some time. So next, I think I'm going to be reading Two Towers. I think I might actually read The Hobbit last since I started on the Lord of the Rings series. I think I might just do that at the end of all of it. We shall see. I did end up finishing the second Hobbit movie and I don't think I finished the third one so I might still watch that later. But yeah, if you enjoyed this video um, please let me know. If you have any more information about Tolkien um, that you think I should know about before reading the next books please let me know down below or let me know anyone that would have that kind of information where I can like look for those resources. Since it's such a popular series there's just so many other videos on YouTube that it's hard to find exactly what you're looking for. So let me know if you have any of those. But thank you so much for watching! If you enjoyed this video please hit that like and subscribe button especially if you want to see me reading the second book and see all my reactions with that one. That should be coming out um, I think a couple weeks from now. I think I'm going to take a break and read some other things and then come back to this one. Yeah, so thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day. Bye! Upon the hearth the fire is red beneath the roof there is a bed but not yet weary are our feet still round the corner we may meet a sudden tree or standing stone that none have seen but we alone tree and flower and leaf and grass let them pass let them pass hill and water under sky pass them by pass them by Still round the corner there we meet a new road or a secret gate And though we pass them by today, tomorrow we may come this way And take the hidden paths that run towards the moon or to the sun Apple, thorn, and nut, and so let them go, let them go Sand and stone and pool and dell Fare you well, fare you well Home is behind the world ahead There are many paths to tread through Shadows to edge the light Stars are all right Then the world behind and home ahead Will wander back to home and bed Mist and twilight, cloud and shade Away shall fade, away shall fade 
fire and lamp and bead and bread and then to bed and then to bed.